Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm gonna to be walking through an app called Minsar Studio for the HoloLens. Minsar Studio is a no-code prototyping and designing platform for augmented reality experiences. And it's also shareable, so it's kind of like a Google Doc for designing and prototyping these experiences in AR. Now for any of you out there who do user experience or UI design right now for apps and websites and things like that, there are lots of shareable platforms for designing and prototyping those type of applications but there's not really any that I saw yet besides Minsar Studio for AR and VR experiences. So once I found it on the App Store, I definitely wanted to give it a look. Now I'll be demonstrating this on the HoloLens, but they also have apps for Magic Leap, Oculus Quest, and even iOS and Android. So if you have any of those devices, you can try it out for yourself. As more people start buying mixed reality devices, I think it's gonna be really important that there are tools out there like this for either individuals to create AR experiences or even companies that would hire teams to go out and build them, they, for the most part, would wanna prototype them first before taking them to be coded and built all the way out. So if you get your hands on this and actually try it out, if you have a device where it works, I would definitely give it a shot and you could probably learn a thing or two about mixed reality design and prototyping apps before they actually get built. So to demonstrate the capabilities of Minsar Studio, I'm gonna create a simple experience that I think users could drop it in their environment either with their phone, which is what would be most common nowadays, or in the future, if they had all day wearable AR glasses or something like that, they could just use Minsar Studio and drop the experience into their environment. I don't know what I'm gonna build yet, but let's jump into the app and see what I can make. All right, here we are in Minsar Studio. This is just the home menu. You can see we have three options to start, new project, open project, or sign out. We're gonna create a new project, so I'll click that first. Then I'm going to choose the location for my experience. We have any location, physical location or virtual. I'm just going to choose any because I want this experience to be dropped in wherever the user is essentially. For an anchor, we have a simple anchor, image anchor, or a surface anchor. And again, I'm just going to choose the first option, simple anchor. And this will create like a white sphere that the user will also see when they first open our experience. It looks like that. And I'm going to move to right up against the wall and just tap to place it right there. So I decided I'm going to build a Gibson electric guitar display experience. Basically, there's going to be three guitars lined up next to each other. And when the user taps each one, some audio from that guitar is going to start playing. So it'll give the user an idea of what that guitar really sounds like. I'm kind of picturing this like an in-store guitar display but this has the added bonus of the user actually being able to hear what each one sounds like. So I think this would be like, you know, a hypothetical marketing experience for a, a company like Gibson. All right, so now we're gonna import some of our assets. I'm gonna click import assets and you've got a couple options here in Minsar Studio. You can do Dropbox, Google Drive, local storage, Sketchfab, or some basic shapes if you just want to drop those into your experience. You got options here, but I'm gonna go with Google Drive and I've already got my folders all set up. First thing I'm gonna import is actually a Gibson logo. Like I said, this, I'm kind of picturing this like it would be a real in-store uh, display. So I, I was picturing there'd be a banner or the, the logo behind all the guitars. So that's what I'm gonna place first. I just selected it and then placed it with a tap. And then I can click and drag it around in my environment wherever I want, as well as resize it with the corners. So I'm gonna resize it to about that size right there, and then just center it on the anchor. All right, next I'm gonna actually import some guitars now. So I'm gonna go back, go to import asset, and then we're gonna go back to our main folder structure, click guitars, and then I'm gonna start with the Gibson Firebird. So I'll click that one, and it's gonna start loading the asset. And I got these guitars from Sketchfab. I think two of them were free and one of them cost money, but I was able to download them and then just import them into uh, Google Drive. So I can click and drag this guitar wherever I want, kind of like the Gibson logo. And once I think it's in a good spot, I'll go back and import the Les Paul, pretty iconic Gibson guitar. Once that loads, I can click and drag and move that one wherever I want. I'll just leave it right in the middle. And then I'm gonna go and import another iconic Gibson guitar, the SG. This one's a little bit harder to see than the other two. 
I think just because of the dark colors, but if you don't know what a Gibson SG looks like, you can just Google it and find the red and black one. All right, we got all of our guitars set up. Seems like everything's in a good spot. Seems like everything is evenly placed around the anchor. So next we're gonna start importing our audio assets. And for this, I actually want to have some videos start playing and that's what I imported into Google Drive, but it seems like there's a bug with Minstar Studio for this. Uh, they don't show up on the HoloLens or in the actual experience, so it's kind of going to look like a box with nothing in it, but we're just going to use it for the audio in this case. So I imported the first video for the SG, and yeah, like I was talking about, you can see the outline, the, the white border around the video, but you can't see the actual content of the video. So for this case, that's fine. I'm sure it's just a small bug they'd be able to fix. So I imported that one, moved it around, Gonna do the same for the SG. It's gonna load and then I'll just tap to place it and then resize it. And then I'll just click and drag and place it right above the head of the guitar. All right, I'll import the third and final video for the Firebird, same thing. Gonna place it, adjust the size, and then click and drag, place it right above the guitar. All right, next we're gonna add some triggers and actions to the guitars. So I'm gonna start with the SG and I'm gonna click triggers and then tap because we want the user to activate the actions on tap. And you can see there's a badge there next to the guitar so that we know the trigger is attached to it. So I'm gonna go back and click actions and levitate. And this is just kind of gonna be a visual cue for the user. Uh, basically it's just gonna move the guitar up and down slowly, but it'll let the user know that that guitar is active and playing music. And we're gonna link that levitate action to the tap trigger. And now you can see they're connected with that white line connecting the two. All right, next we wanna add the play action to the video so that when the user taps a guitar, it actually starts playing the video. So we're gonna to go to actions, play toggle, and then we wanna link that to the tap trigger. And you can see there's a play toggle badge next to the video as well. So we'll click link and then we wanna tap on the tap trigger of the guitar, and you can see now those two are linked as well. So when the user taps the guitar, it'll start levitating the guitar and playing the audio at the same time. We're gonna do the exact same thing for the Les Paul. Go to triggers, tap, there's the badge there. We're gonna to to go to actions and then levitate. Those two are connected. Next, we're gonna to go to the video. We're gonna click actions, play toggle, and then we're gonna link that to the tap trigger on the guitar. And again, we're gonna do the same thing for the Firebird. Add a trigger, a tap, action. It's gonna be to levitate, same thing as the other two. I gotta say, once you get the hang of the Minsar Studio menu and the actions and where everything is, it's actually really easy to use and it's pretty easy to connect everything. I am cutting the video here, obviously, to make it a little bit quicker, but this is almost as fast as I was doing it in real time. So I gotta say, I was pretty impressed with that. All right, all the guitars are hooked up and connected and ready to go, but we can still see the anchor in the middle there, and that's because we're in edit mode. So to get out of edit mode into preview mode, we can click with both hands, which is just connecting the index finger to the thumb, hold that down, we'll exit edit mode and go to preview mode, and the anchor goes away. So now we can actually test each guitar and see if they work. SG worked great, let's try the Les Paul. Perfect, and let's try the Firebird. All right, all three guitars work exactly as expected. I think this turned out pretty good. I know it's a relatively simple experience in terms of, you know, number of holograms and the audio and all that stuff, but if you just picture this as a prototype for a more complex experience that maybe Gibson would want to create or something like that, 
this was really easy to make. I, you know, I put it together in less than 20 minutes, just dragging and dropping these holograms in, into my environment, added some audio really easily, added actions, all without code. And again, this is a collaborative tool, so you know you could share this with other people on your team, and they could jump in and contribute as well. I think Mintstar Studio has done a great job with this platform so far, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it progresses in the future. All right, I hope you found some value in watching me build that Gibson guitar experience there. And I hope you could see how easy it was to just drag and drop the elements that I wanted with touch interactions and sounds and videos and pictures and things like that. That's a lot easier than going into Unity or Unreal Engine and coding the whole thing out. Like I mentioned earlier, I think it's a really important step in the building process of an AR or VR experience to actually prototype it first before you code it. And I, I think Minstar Studio does a great job with that. The only downside or gripe I had was that the videos didn't work, but I'm sure that's just a small bug they could work through and fix easily. Now, I'm not sponsored by Minstar Studio. I just think it's a cool app that they have, but if you use it, let me know what you think of it or let them know on Twitter. I'm sure they'd be really happy to hear about your experience with it. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.